In this clip, we're first starting by characterizing what I call good old data, or in other words, traditional data sets that social scientists have used in the past to, to do research. And this is useful for two particular um, reasons. The first one is that it's interesting in itself to know what are the main uh, advantages and disadvantages of the traditional data that social science has used. What is the backdrop against which a lot of the data revolution that we've seen in previous sections has come about? And and in, that in itself is useful. The second reason is that by making these very explicit, it will help us contrast what is new in what we will then later call new forms of data. So let's start by getting a look into the uh, main characteristics of traditional data sets. And as I was saying, I'm, I'm splitting these in two, two main parts. First, we're going to look at the main advantages of these traditional data, or what are the main positive characteristics or positive features. And then we'll look into the disadvantages or, or some of the drawbacks of these traditional data sets. First, let's start with the good news. So these data sets are, you could say a lot of really good things of these data sets is the first thing I should say. Mm -hmm. But if I have to think of three main characteristics, these are, these are them. The first one is that they are what I call here collected for the purpose. This means that they are data sets and databases that were designed to be storing information about whatever subject they are using. And this might seem something obvious and straightforward, but it's actually one of the main counterpoints when we later talk about new forms of data. So because they are collected for the purpose that they were originally designed for, they are carefully designed to be able to um, to retain those those characteristics. So if you've, if you've watched the video of the Census Bureau that it's available on the course website as well, um, you will see that the, the director of the Census Bureau in the United States is saying, we have to collect rich portraits and we design this specifically for that. The second, re the second characteristic then, which is in a way related, is that they're very detailed in information. Again, there's another passage in the video where the, the director of the Census Bureau, 10 simple questions allow us to collect rich profiles and portraits of the country. And this is again, this is a luxury that you can you can get when you're designing a data source specifically for representing uh, some aspect of, of society. In this case, the socioeconomic and demographic characteristics of the nation. And um, because of these two uh, combined reasons, usually what these traditional official data sources uh, end up being is data sets of high quality. This is the best that we have to have a look, a quantitative look at, at societies, at social phenomena, um, and to get a, a good perspective, a good grasp that is as representative as possible of the subject that we're, we're studying. Now, this obviously doesn't come, does it come for free? And if we sort of flip the coin and look at the main drawbacks or, or main um, disadvantages of these traditional data sets is that in part because of the two characteristics that I've just mentioned, or the three, these are, you can already see how they are massive enterprises. One of the US, Bureau, US Census um, data engineers they says we collect information about every single person. Okay, so for every country, for large countries like the United States or China, this is a huge enterprise. And even for smaller countries, it's still a massive enterprise that takes a lot of effort, that takes a lot of time, and also that ends up taking a lot of a lot of money or a lot of financial resources. Because of that, and also because of uh, privacy. Uh, well-founded privacy concern concerns. Even though these data sets are collected super finely grained, the census is is mailed to every person in the country, which means you end up getting uh, a data point for every person or every household really in the country. That doesn't mean that the data that ends up being released is individual. And in fact, in many cases, this is aggregated into much coarser resolution, which is to say that 
instead of getting a data set about every individual, what you end up getting is a data set about small areas in the country. And I should say also that for a lot of purposes, this is absolutely not a problem. But depending on the type of processes that you're interested in looking at, um, losing granularity is, is a problem. And we'll see how this is also something that when we look at new forms of data is one of the benefits that they, that they promise. And another side effect of these data sets being massive enterprises is that they also end up being um, slow, right? Because it takes so much time, so much effort, and also so much money. This is not something that you can do every week or every month or every year. In fact, it's something that ends up happening usually every longer periods of time. In the case of census, they're usually every 10 years. So yes, you get very detailed and rich portraits of a country, but you get them once every 10 years. And we'll see this is also something where new forms of data can, can help. So three main drawbacks or, or not as great features of traditional data sets is that they are massive enterprises that need to be released in, in at a coarse resolution and that they're released more slowly. Some examples of these data sets, uh, we've already mentioned the, the CADL censuses that uh, developed and, and many developing countries release regularly or at least every 10 years. Uh, but there's other, other examples. So for example, longitudinal surveys, almost every uh, developed country has cohorts, what they call cohort studies, where they pick a subset, usually a very small subset, although representative of the population, and they follow, they track that over time. Again, that provides very useful information, but it has its limits in terms of how much you can apply it at um, smaller geographical units, etc. And then social scientists have been pioneers and have been very, very avid users of smaller custom collected surveys, such as interviews, smaller surveys that are targeted for one particular topic, but also for one particular smaller population. Economic indicators, another example of massive enterprises. So for example, the, um, the GDP indicator, the, the gross domestic product index that measures the size of the economy is something that takes, it's, it's an incredibly large enterprise to collect and, and so on. So that means that it either doesn't come very often or when it comes, it doesn't come for, it comes at very coarse resolutions. At, and in any cases, they're very costly enterprises. Okay, so now that we know, this video has given us a better understanding of what traditional data sets are. So carry on on the course to get a better sense of what is the, how is the new wave of data sets that we are seeing through the data revolution.